3D wood carving. Welcome to episode 6 of CNC Router Beginner to Pro. Now, these here look fantastic and they are super simple to make. In today's episode, I have several tips as I always do, but I also have two pro tips for you that I have seen so far not on YouTube creating these using VCarve. All right, let's hit start and see what happens. <laughs> So I'd like to interrupt here for a shameless plug for my channel. Um, I always get so excited and there's so much knowledge and so much items that I like to share. And what happens is that normally I don't make notes and by the time I edit the video, I always think, oh, forgot this, forgot this, forgot this. Now, if you get value out of this, would you please leave me a like? Uh, the reason that is I, I'm so excited and then I come back days later and I have a hundred views. I mean literally a hundred views on, on a video that takes me two days to make and that's sort of disappointing. So leave me a like and other people will see the content as well. Thank you. So carving these out is almost like a little bit of a duration test, endurance test for your equipment. Uh, there are a couple of things that can happen. For one is you try to load the file and you figure out it's too big. Um, these here, this one here is 2 million pixels and or created off 2 million pixels and it's a super long file so your controller might not be able to handle it. The next one is that you are into the carve and all of a sudden your machine re rears off and you know the bit is doing something weird. Well that happens because there might be a static problem or electromagnetic issue on your machine. You'll find that out too. And then at least not last those carves can take hours and your spindle or router might overheat or get hot or hotter than you normally have experienced because of the long runtime. So next is that I like to show you and I actually stained this piece before I carved. This is a piece of maple and I like maple out of two reasons. It's a lighter colored wood with only little grain. Um, the lighter color, I think, makes it possible to cast a shadow, a bit of a shadow into those lines. Now, in contrast to that, I like to show you this piece right here. Uh, it's beautiful, yes? It's a piece of bobinga, but I wouldn't choose that to make a carving because all of that grain here will completely distract from whatever it, it is that you are carving. So. A uh, more natural looking wood in a lighter color, natural is not the right word, maybe um, a wood with less grain structure would be uh, preferred, or I prefer it, how about that? Also, what I like on maple is that this piece right here, I have not sanded. It's right off the machine. Um, it is a really dense wood with closed pores and it carves really well. So the tools that I used today for making this is a stain from Balin. And this is the Master, Balin Master Solar Lux stain in jet black. What I like about it is that I apply it and I can immediately work with it. It is alcohol based, so it will not raise the grain. You don't have to sand it. So you stain it and you're basically ready to go. There's two bits I used. And the first one is an eighth of an inch down cut bit. Uh, you can use a quarter inch if you have, but the carving is relatively small. So the time for, um, it, I think the time for clearing that out was maybe something around 12 minutes or so, 10 minutes, I would say. And then I used a white side conical four flute ball nose end mill with a two degree taper. It had a quarter inch shank. 
So what I like about this is the conical shape gives the tool a much, much more rigidity. And uh, that is important for finer detail as you don't really want any vibration. So another note is because these carves take so much time, if you are in a business environment and you think, oh, that looks cool, I'm going to get a CNC and I'm going to sell those at a market or something like that, then just let me tell you that uh, there are other machines out there. They have like five spindles on them and they make five at a time of these and the time you need um, and how many you can make in a day using your equipment that will just usually from a financial standpoint not work out. So go into this knowing that this is for a friend or it's just cool to have, but also realize that selling them online uh, for business might be a tough job to do. So you're gonna make a new setup in VCarve and start with the job setup. And you're gonna put your data in for your material size and everything. And there's one important item here, the material resolution at the bottom. You wanna change that right away to high. Probably you normally don't touch that, but this value actually makes a difference how the machine cuts. The model will be generated with more pixels and those pixels translate into a finer cut. My uh, job size is 180 by 180 by 20. And the Z, zero position is on top of the material and the datum point in the center. I always like to do that for uh, carves to put that in the center. I think that it just makes it uh, convenient to find and uh, your model will be in the center. As you can see, I already imported the Edel right into my project here. And the way you're gonna do that is really simple. You go to clip art, uh, select what would you, the image that you like or the clip art you like and then drag it onto your project. Okay, so size it up to the way you like it. And then there is really just two more things that are important that you need to do. If you go to the modeling tab, you will see that you have now the eagle right here and as a component. Um, you will need to go to this sign up here. This is a zero plane. We do need the zero plane to be able to carve this. So all you have to do is hit that button and it will automatically make a plane with zero thickness onto the top of your project. So if you double click the eagle head, or if you wanna go back to that, there's also this wrench sign up here. But if you double click the eagle head, the component properties are going to come up. You're gonna see a shape height and a base height. These are the two things I like to work with here in this uh, setup. So the shape height is at 12 millimeters, 11.998, so that's really 12. 12 millimeters. I have a base height here of minus 0 0.8 and I'd like to show you why I set that up. So I reset the height here to zero millimeters and the file will update actually right here. And now let's go over to the tool pass. Here I have the roughing tool pass, double click to edit. And I have here selected vector. That will be my uh, the limit boundary. So if you look at the 2D view, the one that is highlighted right here, that would be my selected vector. And in the 3D view, I like to show you something. The machining allowance I give usually, you can give this a millimeter, okay? So usually what I would do is I would put one millimeters in here and then that would be the way I machine it. Let's calculate the tool pass and here it is and let's play it pretty quick and we are staying one millimeter above our eagle face right here and you see already we have an island right here and you go like well yeah that is going to be okay because in with my finishing tool pass i'm going to carve that away well are we and this is where things get a little bit dicey because several times i've been left with a patch uh, that is not cut on my carve and that's really really um, at the very end and there's hours into it all right let me show you a trick here what we are going to do is going to close this go back to the roughing tool pass and i'm going to change that from one millimeter to 0 0.2 so now we're going to calculate this again and reset the preview let's simulate this one more time 0.2 millimeters and we still have a patch that will not get machined right here. 
that would be not a good event and you would be probably really, really sad if that happened. So I like to show you here a trick of how it works and how it doesn't work really. So back here at our modeling component properties tab, we have the heights of 12, right? And I've seen several YouTubers say change this height and say, well, that will take care of it. Well, really? Let's try this. So we're going to lower the height and make this make it significant. It's 12. I'm going to sink that down by two millimeter or reduce the height by two millimeters. That should definitely take care of it. It was just a little patch at 0.2. That will definitely take care of it. Let's go back to our roughing tool pass and let's leave this at 0.2. So just a sheet of paper. Let's recalculate and reset the preview one more time. And here it is. And guess what? It has not been taken care of. Even so, you reduced your height by two millimeters, that patch is still there. Why? Well, let me show you. Because we have the zero plane and your model is stuck to the zero plane and this value right here, the shape height, grows from the zero plane down. So basically, the zero plane is right here. This is the zero plane and your model grows down from that. And this is why that is not working. Um, so here is the way of doing it. I'm going to leave the shape height. I'm going to reset the heights. So it's back to 12 and the base value, the base height. Now I'm going to set that at, and I chose arbitrary, a negative 0 0.8 millimeter. It looked right to me because it was such a small patch. And now what I will do is I'm going to go over here to my roughing tool pass. And I'm going to leave the 0.2 again. So we are just staying, staying 0.2 millimeter off of our surface that will be finished later on. Calculate it. Reset. And simulate one more time. And voila, the patch is gone. So that is your pro tip right here. Work on your model with the base height, okay? So this is uh, one trick that I've learned over the time. Okay, the finishing tool pass, it's a 1 8 inch ball nose. And let's look at the parameters here pretty quick. There's one important one and that's a step over. So for this result that you saw uh, earlier, I chose a 10% step over. That is for the size of that carving appropriate. And the spindle speed here is 16,000 and the feed rate uh, 1270, but I think 1300 will be uh, just fine. So we're gonna choose the raster and I have zero degrees. So we again go horizontally. That is our grain alignment. We're gonna calculate that and that's gonna take a moment because there's in total 2 million points, 2 million pixels here that will need to be calculated. And I'm not gonna simulate that um, or we, hang on a second, we can. Let's simulate it pretty quick. There it is. Um, this is how our finished eagle is going to look like. So, and you can see these lines right here. They are actually coming out the exact same way uh, in the carving. So it's, uh, it's a really good demonstration, I think, of what you are going to get. Okay, so next up is one other pro tips that I have for you. And that is whenever the bit is gonna to come to the outside of your profile. So here we have the dish and it's coming to the outside of the dish and your material is not like 100% flat. It will ultimately create a gap or let's say a rigid right here, uh, a little bit of a trench. And there's a really, really simple way around this. And that is my pro tip. And that is that we are going to make another outer circle. So we're gonna take the vector that we put around our image and we're gonna offset that vector. So in drawing, offset, and I just chose 1.8 millimeters. So it's a bit more than half of a 1 8 inch bit. So it's not half, a bit more than half. Um, so take a bit less than half or more than half, but not half. Half is not a good number. Doesn't matter why right now, but um, so 1.8 millimeters, I offset that. And now we are going to get in our simulation here, 
a really nice circle that will go around all of this and it will make us a very nice professional look. So let's simulate that as well. And there it is. So all of these small marks that come from the tool that are left in your product or in the top surface, they're all gone now. Okay, this is it.